Hey everybody, how are you? It's Peter again for MLB Trade Rumors and Discussions. It's Monday, January 6, 2020. Uh, we're just going to keep going every day for the rest of the year, just like I promised you guys. And I want to just talk about something different today, right? And you know how we always talk about the Diamondbacks and we always talk about who they're going to get and they're playing the Dodgers and who's the better team and what outfielder and all these different things. But I want to talk about one thing today and it's going to stay with the Diamondbacks, but I just want to talk about overall for baseball prospects. Prospects is a very exciting word and it's a very dangerous word, right? Because you think, you know, you get a prospect and you see what they do and in their farm system and you're really excited. But that technically doesn't mean, you know, you have to keep all these guys and expect them that they're going to be amazing. Because if you get an opportunity to win, you got to go for it. Because that's not promised in a few years. That's not promised at all. You don't know how these prospects are going to be. You don't know if they're going to pitch that way the year later. You don't know if they're going to get hurt. You don't know how they're going to do in the majors. So what I want to talk about is how Mike Hazen has been great, and he only really made one mistake, right? It was a big mistake, but to me, he's been just phenomenal. So ever since he got hired, and that was in October of 2016, he's made the Diamondbacks a winning team, right? 2017, we won over 90, I think it was 93 games. We made the playoffs played the Dodgers, got swept, but were for, was fantastic. 2018 and 19, we definitely regressed an 18 of an 82 and 80 record. And in 19, we got back up for 85 wins, right? And nobody expected that. However, however, I know that Granke's contract messed things up, but the big mistake that Hazen made, and I will always say this, and I, again, I'm the biggest fan of him because he's the reason why we're doing better, is we didn't, get, we didn't keep J.D. Martinez. To me, that was our biggest mistake. That guy was the reason we made the playoffs that year. That was the reason why everybody was better on the team. And if we had him now, things be a world of a difference. However, I wanted to read some numbers to you really fast of what he batted. If I told you somebody batted 300 and hit 29, 302 and hit 29 home runs with a bunch of RBIs, you say, wow, that's a great year. J.D. Martinez did that in 62 games for Arizona. <laughs> In 62 games, he hit 302 with 29 home runs. Now, I know Scott Boris was a douche, and he tried to get it, you know, like he always does, jack up the price. But J.D. wanted to give them a discount, and I think that was the biggest mistake. So now, we're constantly looking now to get that type of player back, and it's very difficult to get. The only guy I compare to that can have that type of year for Arizona would be a guy like Castellanos, because I see he's the type of hitter like him, and he can still hit for power and double. So... That's why I wanted Castellanos. But again, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because right now we have to be able to at least go for this in the next couple of years. We have a lot, a lot of good players right now. Marte's in the middle of his prime. Escobar is in the middle of his prime. So you got guys right now that you have to surround this with. Okay, Bumgarner is 30, so he still has about four or five years. You got to go for these things now, and I think that's what Hazen's doing. But prospect. This word is just scary because we have a ton of prospects, something that we didn't have before. But I'm going to read you off some names of prospects that I remember that I wrote down from before who was unbelievable. Number one a few years ago was Archie Bradley. He was supposed to be the next big thing. He was projected to be a number one or a number two starter. Dominant. He's our closer now. Still very exciting, but... Nowhere near going to be a starter. Can't go past it like three, four innings, right? Only has two pitches. So that's one. After that, I'm going to name a bunch of others who are not here anymore. You got Braden Shipley, who was supposed to be really good, projected to be a number, like a number three pitcher, a heavy sinker, all this stuff. He's gone, right? I'm going to read another name to you. Brandon Drury. Supposed to be dominant coming up. Killing it in the minors. It's no longer here, Right? Socrates Brito. No idea. It's in Toronto now, I believe. And he was killing it. Never could put it together. Never could stay healthy. Peter O'Brien. Another guy. 30 home runs in the minor leagues. Just raking it. Comes up to MLB. I don't know if he can hit the ball. Swings at everything. So, you know, these are guys that we had before. And their minor league numbers look wonderful. Just like we have now. Who knows? Right? You go by what's proven. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, the prospects are not going to turn out, but you got to go for these things now, which is why I've been making these videos saying we need a hitter, we need an outfielder, and we need a bullpen guy. 
and I know Hazen's on top of it. I know I'm sure he's listening to all his fans one day, but I don't think he gives a crap. I think he's going to do what he knows is best is for baseball, but he knows his fans are looking to win. And he is, he felt a certain way when he's seen all his players go to other teams, which I understand. You know, it's, I mentioned this before, it's very difficult to have all your top players go to other teams because you traded them, like Bauer and all those guys, and then you get stuff back, Didi, all these guys that you had do well on other teams. And it's just very, very difficult. Scherzer, Corbin, it's very hard, right? But then you have these other players in the minor leagues, and then you don't know what's going to happen. So what I'm asking for, again, is you go for it now. You don't know what's going to happen. You got to go for these players. And you don't want to get rid of your team. You don't want to get rid of all your prospects for one. But you still got to go for this, right? When you're this close, go. Who knows if in a couple of years something's going to happen? Who knows if, God forbid, Marte hurts his back and Escobar doesn't play well. And now all of a sudden we win 70-something games. And then we got to get rid of Bumgarner's contract and all this. You got to go for these things. Right? That's all I'm saying. You build up your farm system, but you build it up so much where if you lose one or two, like they did with the Marlins last year, who cares? You, you got a better team. You still got a bunch of guys in there, and you're still in the position to get one or two players in free agency. So now's the time. That's the whole point of this. I want you guys to tell me what you think about prospects because, I again, that word to me is a very scary word, and it's a very exciting word. That's just what I think, you know? And tell me what you think about J.D. Martinez because we're still looking to replace that type of guy. Okay, he's the reason Goldie was better that year. He was the reason we beat Colorado because Goldie was able to have protection. Poor Goldie never had protection the way he could have had. So at this point, what can we do? What guy can we get to make this better, to challenge the Dodgers? Because we're right there, and I don't want to lose this. Because the Padres are coming. They're, they're, they're not right there, but they're on our heels. Okay? So you guys let me know what you think. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Take care.